is the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. So many people have a, um, their own perception of what the mark of the beast really is. But we're going to see what the Bible says about what the mark of the beast is. I've been talking to a lot of people today about um, the Bible. They say, is the Bible real? It's not, it's not for us as African American people. It is a book that's written by the Caucasian race. But one thing that I reassure them is, as long as you know how to read the Bible and understand the Bible, it doesn't matter what race you really are. Because the Bible is the biggest, most sought for Bible or book in the world. In the world. So last week we was talking about uh, how many hours in the day, which a lot of people don't understand how Jesus was really giving the revelation to the disciples, the apostles, uh, during biblical time. One thing that um, today that I think about when I hear a lot of people um, when I hear a lot of people today that's in what we call churches, which we know that we are the church, they are in the edifice of building. Um, Jesus had 12 apostles, 12. And from the Bible point of view, after that, there will be no more apostles. So a lot of people today are calling themselves apostles, which I really, I really. I don't get into an argument or debate with him. I just feel that sometimes man want to be greater and bigger than what he is. And I don't, from the Bible point of view, I don't believe there are any more apostles coming after what Jesus did. When Paul wrote most of the New Testament, people today are saying that we're under grace. If you've been in any, any um, ministry today, you'll see people saying the New Testament is grace, Old Testament is the law. We don't need that anymore. That's not true. Because Paul, in his writing, always say, for it is written. Whenever you see Paul say it is written, he's referring back to the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the law. Now, let's start off there. Let's start off there. In Matthew, the 23rd chapter. Matthew, the 23rd chapter, verse 2. And we, no, we're going to be verse 1 and 2. When it says, I'll give you a few seconds to get there, I see food turning. Sometimes I, I, I go so fast. Oh, man. You know, I, I, I have to slow down and realize that I've been doing this for some years. And <clears throat> that's what I like about the Father, the Holy Spirit. He will teach you so well that when you up under, when you come to give me lecture, you have to have your Bible, you have to have pencil and paper. You have to be able to write these things down because I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit don't play. When they give you something, believe me, it's for a reason. And so, so that's why sometimes I have to catch myself. In Matthew 23rd chapter, verse 1, it reads as important. Then spoke Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. Verse 2. Saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in the seat let me read that again. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now, Moses was the lawgiver. So why did they want Moses' seat? So that they can change the Bible, the law. And I think they did a pretty good, pretty good job of it. Pretty good job of it. Because if you if you look at the Bible today, that's why I have so many, uh, Mr. Tommy, it's like every translation. Reads different. Right, give, you a different give you a different meaning. People say, well, well, that ain't the word of God because the Bible should be straight down the middle, written like it was. But if it was, we couldn't read it. Because most people, because you can't speak Hebrew, can't speak Aramaic, you can't speak Greek, you can't speak uh, uh, Arabic. So when they translated it and transliterated it, there are some English words that you cannot compare with other languages. So, therefore, that's what they call a telicized. 
They had to add a word to come close to that meaning. That's why it's very important to study. Uh, but most of us, we can't even read the Bible because we don't give that diligent time. So they wanted, they wanted to sit in the seat of Moses because they wanted to change the law. So when I read my Bible, people say, you had over 300 Bibles and you read these Bibles yet? Because I feel I take what I do serious. When I'm teaching uh, the Father's people, they are special people. And you don't belittle or look down on anyone because you never know where you're going to be at the next minute. So uh, I know that from experience. Uh, very, I felt that was very successful. I'm not going to say wealthy, successful. But when I, when I thought lost my success, uh, it, was, it was a turnaround for me. But it humbled me and it taught me so much. So they, they wanted to send the seed of Moses for a reason. Now, in the book of Revelation, when we was talking about last week, we were talking about how many hours in the day, when we was thinking that we was really going through something. Uh, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Jesus wants us to have a perfect understanding. One thing, too. Uh, Holy Spirit, give me a second. Um, people have a bad saying, we not perfect. That's not what the Bible says. Let's go to let's go to James the third chapter. James the third chapter. And I said people have to stop condemning themselves uh, before they get started. James, the book of James, right after Hebrews. He said, "Be perfect, and I am perfect." Now that's another scripture. But people say, "Well, I ain't Jesus." People, see, people will always try to find a reason to not validate themselves as being something special. If the Holy Spirit is living inside of you, then why would you convict it and convict yourself? Which you can't do either, I believe. You can't do either because I believe everything was created for them and for a purpose in a set of time. In a set of, in a set of time. So in that third chapter of James, Verse 1 and 2. I'm just going to read one. But it really focuses around verse 2. James 3 and verse 2. Okay? Uh, it says in the third chapter, verse 1, My brethren, be not many teachers. Or some translations may say uh, masters. Knowing that we shall receive the greater judgment. See, so when you teach, guess who get the greater judgment? The teachers. The masters. Because why? We've been chosen and we know better. So when you see a lot of things going on today in these in what they call uh, churches, which, which is incorrect, or I can say ministries, um, judgment first is going to start at the house of prayer. It's going to start with us. So <clears throat> if, you don't, if you don't give yourself credit enough to know and to, to be a better person, then how could you ever be able to understand the Bible? Or the Quran, or the Torah, the most main three books that deal with religion uh, on the face of the earth. Now, some people that study Egyptology, maybe like read the Book of the Dead, uh, uh, one of the main books that they really love to read, but really they can't understand that. And some of them want to go off into uh, the symbology of the book of the dead, but you, how are you going to do that if you can't understand what the symbols really mean? Okay, in verse 2, it says, For in many things, now listen to that, he said, In many things we all stumble. Now, some of you all's translation may say, Offend all. Listen to that. Pay close attention to that. He says, For in many things, we all stumble, or we uh, offend all. So that, so that right there, telling you that James knew as as he wrote this that you was going to make mistakes, you was going to offend people along the way. But this is the next part that I like. He said, "If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man." Did you see that? So what makes you not perfect? Not offending with word. Because he just told you in many things you're going to stumble or you're going to offend all. So that had nothing to do with being perfect. 
And he said, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. So what is he saying? That thing up under your nose is what, is what condemns you. That tongue, that mouth, the words that you form. So and that's what I think <clears throat> that they're actually going on in what we call churches today. I like to say ministries because a lot of our leaders today, they're so busy trying to be popular and get riches, things, but yet they don't take the time out to really understand the spirit in them. That's what Jesus is concerned about, the spirit in you, the soul. And, and until we understand how important that is, we're in some trouble. We're in some serious trouble. Okay, so I want to bring those two verses out um, before we really actually go into more depth things of the Bible, which is the book of Revelations. Revelations. In the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations, I, I don't want to move too fast. Uh, okay, great, okay. Um, let me move some of these books out here. Um, in that 13th chapter of the book of Revelations, Now, you hear a lot of people say, wow, 13, 13, that's a curse now. That's what people understand. 13 represents apostate, apostate, A-P-O-S-T-A-S-Y. Again, apostate, A-P-O-S-T-A-S-Y. Apostate, or depravity and rebellion. That's what the number 13 represents. In our numerology and what we understand today. Uh, and the Bible says rebellion is as, as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is, is as the sin of witchcraft. So we got to understand that every number, every chapter in the book has a meaning. Then if you deal with one, one represents unity, unity or new beginning. The three represents divine completion and perfection. Divine complete completion and perfection. Again, let me get that. One represents unity, U N I T Y. U N I T Y. Or new beginnings. The three represents divine completeness and perfection. Divine, D, I, V, I, N, E, complete, completeness, C, O, M, P, L, E, T, E, N, S, S, or perfection, P, E, R, F, E, C, T, I, O, N, again, P, E, R, F E C T I O N. Now, putting those two together brings us to the number 13, which means apostate, depravity, or rebellion. So I want to let you know what 13 really means. But we're gonna we're gonna go to the last verse in the 13th chapter, which is 18. 18 means bondage. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? 18 means bondage. But 1 plus 8 is 9. Again, 1 is unity, new beginnings. 8 is new birth and new beginnings. Isn't this something? So when you put 1 plus 8, which is 9, that means fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit, divine completeness from the Father. Again, fruit of the Spirit. That's why the spirit is so important. The fruits and divine completeness from the Father. Okay? So now let's read this 18th verse. In, again, in the 13th chapter of Revelations, verse 18. It said, Here is wisdom. 
Now the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. The principal thing. Let him that have understanding do what? Count. It didn't say read. You can't read this, this verse. You have to count. Count. Count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. Wow. First it said count the number of the beast. For that beast is a man. And his number is. Now he's going he's to give his number. 600. Three scores and six. Again, six hundred. Three scores and six. A score is twenty. Three times twenty is sixty. Three times twenty is sixty. A score is twenty and six. So, what number do you have? Six. Six, six. Wow. Interesting. But he said count it. A lot of people, when they read this verse, they read it, but they never count it. Now, if, if I had time, time goes so quick, I would get into the meaning of the letter count, meaning of the word count, which means a smooth plate, a stone, which is called the plate that sits up under the earth, what the earth sits on. When they start cracking them plates, that's when the earth begins to shift. Shift. That's why you get earthquakes. You get all these different floods. You get all this kind of stuff. So when people read the Bible, they think they can just read it just like that. No. Count means a smooth stone, which in, when you study it in the Greek, it means a plate, which is what the earth sits on. I mean, this was deep when the Father talked gave me this years ago. So, but now we have to count this number. The first number in that verse was 600. 600. What do 600 mean? What do 600 mean? 600 means warfare. Warfare. Now, anytime you look at this word 600 in the Bible, guess what you're going to get? Warfare. Now let's do that real quick. Let's do that real quick. We're going to Exodus. Exodus, the second book in the Bible. Exodus. Exodus. I have so many ink and stuff in this Bible. Everything falls out. Um, the second book in the Bible, Genesis, Exodus. The 14th chapter. 14 chapter. Exodus. E X O D U S. There you go. Now, what does 600 mean? Warfare. Warfare. So, a lot of times people think when they read the Bible that they can really just read the Bible and get an understanding of it. And that's what we, that's, that's why one of my books I wrote. That is a must read. One of them is a must read. Don't be outfoxed by the devil. Learn your ABCs. It goes into that, to that number. Okay. Okay, so Exodus the 14th chapter. Beginning with verse 6. Exodus the 14th chapter. Beginning with verse 6. Now it's not a coincidence that we happen to be dealing with that sixth verse, which is we we talk about weakness of man, manifestation of sin, evils of Satan. Again, six. Weakness of man, manifestation of sin, evils of Satan. Okay? <clears throat> now, 14 means deliverance and salvation. Deliverance and salvation. Now, in that sixth verse in the 14th chapter of Exodus, we read like this. And I'm reading from the Schofield Study Bible, just in case people want to know where I'm reading from, because they have all these new translations now. 
Uh, okay, it reads like this. And he made ready his chariots and took his people with him. What was chariots used for back in biblical times? War. 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 See how the Bible is just self-explanatory? Self-explanatory. Since running means what? Warfare. Now watch the next verse. Now this, this, this is interesting. And he took how many? 600. 600 chosen chariots. What do you think he took those 600 chosen chariots for? For war. Every time you see the number 600 in the Bible, it's going to talk about war. Every time. And we're going to go to a few more places to show you that the Bible must be studied, not read. That's why when I was when I was coming up, teenagers, 20s, 30s, I think in my 30s I started realizing there was more to this than what I was getting. So when you read the mark of the beast, he's going he's giving you the definition of what's actually taking place. That's why I said you got can't be out fought by the devil. You got to learn your ABC. Now what did, what what number is ABC? What's the first number in our alphabet? One. one. The second letter is B. What is that? Two. Two. Two plus one is what? Three. And C is what? Three. Three plus three is what? Six. Six. We still dealing with man. See, numbers, letters are codes to be deciphered, to get an understanding. <clears throat> so we see this now. Am I making this up? No, you'll see this in the Bible for yourself. And are we counting? Yes, we're not reading. We're counting. Okay? So he says he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. So Pharaoh wasn't playing. He took the captains, not, not the soldiers only. He took the captains, not the sergeants only. Not the lieutenants only. Not the majors only. He took captains, which was very skilled. So he wasn't playing with Israel. That's what we say today. But that, skilled in warfare. Very skilled. Seasoned. Years of warfare. So, <clears throat> when we begin to understand that, when we say the word Israel, we bastardize it. We say Israel. That's, it, that's not pronouncing it the proper way. It's Ish, which is the sixth day man before Adam and Eve. Ra, which is the sun deity, which we knew very well. El, which is a divine being. We say God. So it's Israel, not Israel. Ish is a code, Ra is a code, and El is a code. In the book of Hosea, it tells you about Ishi. It's the same as Ish. Before Adam. Now we know that Adam and Eve was not the first creation. They wasn't created. They was formed. In Genesis 2 and 7, it said the Lord God. In Genesis 1 and 26, it said God created. See the difference? Very important. Genesis 1 and 26 and Genesis 2 and 7. Two different things. You've got to pay attention. Genesis 1 and 26 in Genesis 2 and 7. In Genesis 2 and 7, the Lord God formed man after the dust, which was Adam. Now, which come first? One or two? One. One. So there were some people already in chapter 1. Then Adam and Eve in chapter 2 came about. Okay, so that's the first time we see 600. Let's go to the book of Judges. Judges. You got the next book, Leviticus, Numbers. I got this all folded up uh, because I'm writing. I was writing my book and I didn't want to lose it. Uh, the book of Judges. Then you have Deuteronomy. You have Joshua. Then you have Judges. Judges, the third chapter. Okay. 
Judges, the third chapter. Very important, people. I mean, when we read the Bible, we must get an understanding about the Bible because so many people get so turned off when they hear the word Bible. The turnoff should be that you have yeah, illiterate leaders and teachers that's teaching you not to use growth spiritually, but for them to get in your pocket. This is the whole concept of what they call church today. Everybody want to be deep. Everybody want to be the, the top. Everybody want to be the greatest. But what about what about being humble? What about taking the time out to love the people, teach the people, feed the sheep, feed them? Okay, Judges, the third chapter, verse 31. Judges 3 and 31. It says, And after him was Shambar, the son of Anak, who slew of the Philistines, how many? 600. 600. What does that sound like? Warfare, them. 600 men with the ox cord, and he also delivered Ish Rael. That's the second time we've seen 600, right? Don't deal with warfare? Okay, the same book. Let's go to the 30th chapter. The same book, Judges. I mean, the 21st chapter. The, so, the 20th chapter, excuse me. 20th, the 20th chapter of Judges, the 20th chapter of Judges, same book, verse 47, the 20th chapter of Judges, verse 47. Now, you may get lucky one time with the number 600. How more likely is it to get lucky twice? Great. How much lucky it is to get lucky three times? Rare. So when you read the Bible, you have to read it to get the understanding and the meaning of what they were trying to give to us about this mark of the beast, which Revelation 13 chapter said it is a man. What is this man doing? Creating war. Creating war. And look if they know that our Heavenly Father can destroy them just by a spoken word. Because once those plates shift under the earth, it can swallow them up. The earth will open up. People think it's going to be some miracle, miraculous things happening. No. Man is dooming, <clears throat> excuse me, man is dooming himself. He's dooming himself. Every time he drill down deep and use explosives to get gold and stones, he's destroying things. Okay, it used to be a time where gold and diamonds used to be up on the surface. But as they begin to wickedly do things, the earth begins to sink. Now they're saying uh, uh, the Arctic Circle is beginning to crack. And that water now is beginning to flow into the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean. And the water levels are rising now. Oh, really? Really? We was warned not to do certain things. Okay, back to this. Judges, the 20th chapter, verse 47. But how many? 600. 600. There go again. Men turned and fled into the wilderness unto the rock of Rema and abode in the rock of Rema for a month. Don't it sound like they was doing war? They turned and ran. They turned and ran. Now, when we, when, we, when we actually start getting a half understanding of the Bible like we're doing now, let's go to uh, just another book of 1 Samuel 17. First Samuel 17. Now, look how the Bible strategically explains the definitions of a divine meaning. 
1 Samuel, 17th chapter. Let's start about verse 4. 1 Samuel, 17, verse 4. It said, And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines. Now, what is a champion? A warrior. That's what we are called the man created before Adam. A champion of high degree. Adam was called a hypocrite of low degree. See, when you translate it back into the Hebrew and the Hebrew into English, it gives you a whole other different meaning. But it gives you the meaning in the Bible, but you have to read the Bible like here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept on precept. That's the 28th chapter of Isaiah. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept on precept. You got you to gotta put some time in it. If he gave us three lifetimes, we still wouldn't probably scratch the surface. Now, if you're going like what you're teaching them? Yes. <laughs> yes. We have, we have to get an understanding. Yes. Yes. Now, look. Now, we haven't really got deep, deep. Because when you really want to get the, the codes of the Bible, you got to start with each letter. What makes words? Letters. I remember once they started this thing on television talking about the codes of the Bible. Yes, I had I got that book in New York. I was in Manhattan. I got that book in New York. And a lot of people got that and still didn't read it for face value. They still they started making their own stuff. The codes of the Bible it goes into different shapes and connect different sentences. The Bible do the same thing. If you know how to read it and study it, it does the same thing. Okay, let me get back to this. Uh, verse 7, 17, verse 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistine named, uh-oh, Goliath. Ain't that who David slew? Yeah. With a smooth stone. He had five smooth stones. Same thing we talking about in Revelation. Count them smooth stones. So I remember when I was young, in my 20s and early 30s, I was going to preach. I was going to preach, Papa Tommy. I was going to preach. Had my stuff ready. <laughs> Sermon laid out. Ready to make the people shout so they could think, see how anointed I was. But little did I know, I didn't have the fundamentals of understanding the Bible. Those smooth stones, when David, when, when the Lord moved the earth and gave them smooth stones, they had power in them. He had five stones. Five. Now, how many did it take to kill Goliath? One. One. So what did he do with the other four? Father is very precise about what he give you. Goliath had four sons. All right. Huh? And guess what? If you kill dad, yeah. What do you think his son's going to do? So David had four more stones. Now look how accurate and precise the Lord was and David was. He didn't, he didn't make a mistake. Because that means one of them was going to still live. Or two of them was going to still live. And where did, he, where did he hit them at? In the forehead. The pineal. The pituitary. The way you see and get insight. The front of your brain. That's in my book. Christ looked like me. Okay, um, he says, Goliath of Gad, who height was what? Six cubits and a span. Now, wait a minute, that number what? Six. Six. Three scores, six hundred, three scores, and six. Six weakness and depravity of man. It's not a coincidence. Okay. Um, verse 5 and he had a helmet was armed with a coat of nails and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shackles of bronze now some of your Bibles may say brass verse 6 now look at this notice how verse 6 is correlated with Revelation 6 Three scores of 60 and 600. Verse 6 is not a coincidence. So he says, 
and he had, uh, let me give you, you know, this translation, but he said that he had greaves of bronze or shin armor of bronze upon his legs and a javelin of bronze carried between his shoulders. Now, verse 7, now he's telling you some the verse 7 said, and the stab of his spears was a weaver beam, and his spearhead weighed what? Verse 7. His spearhead weighed what? 600 shackles of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. This is what David had to fight. Before you got to Goliath, you hear someone carrying his shield. That's what you get people to take time about something. I'm an armor bearer. For the past, I'm an armor bearer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lookout for no kids. They don't know what they be really talking about when they say you're an armor bearer. Because that means you must be willing to give your life right. to fight demonic forces. Okay? So we got, we got to the number 600. 600. Now let's go to the book of Daniel. Daniel. Very prophetic book. Book of Daniel. And so many people mess that book up. It, it's a shame. It's a shame how they talk about how prophetically is this, how prophetically is that. And they don't understand the meaning of the book of Daniel. Daniel, the third chapter. Daniel, the third chapter. It's, it's so important for us to have an understanding of what's really taking place. So again, that's why I wrote in the book, one of my books, Don't Be Outboxed by the Devil. Learn your ABC. Now so many people get the devil mixed up, Satan mixed up, Lutheran mixed up, Apollyon mixed up, a bad guy mixed up, Samuel mixed up. I mean, you, you got each each name has a meaning and a vibration. Verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold. He made an image. In the book of Revelation, it talks about worship. What was they worship? That image. And the breast of it, and with that number again, six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. So we're still dealing with numerology right here. But notice something. It says the image of gold who heights was what? Three score cubits. Three score cubits. Sixty. Now what is sixty? Let's get the meaning of sixty. Pride. 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 What come before destruction? Pride. Pride. So we still dealing with those numbers that's in Revelation. Sixty. Three scores. Sixty. Six. Six hundred. Warfare. Okay? Now, if you go back, now, it tells us about, he set up this image, the height was three scores. So when people read that scripture, and before I knew better, I was doing the same thing. When I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach about the Hebrew boys. Can I get a witness? Me, Shep, Stabra, and Abednego. Huh? A lot of me saying it, bad Negro. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but see, the thing the thing that we don't understand is the symbology and the numerology of what's really going on. So, what did Nebuchadnezzar say? If you don't bow down and worship this image, what image you think he was talking about? That beast. That beast. 
And that's why Dan, Daniel said, but then that, when, when you used to get good in the preaching, you used to tell him, no matter what you're going to do, I won't bow to the devil. See, they don't know what they really be saying. I won't bow to the devil. Daniel said, they said, Nebuchadnezzar got so angry and said, if you don't bow down, heat the fire up seven times hotter and throw them in there. So they threw them in there. They said they opened it up and it was for me. Why? Why? We don't understand what we be doing when we be up there with all the theatrical, acrobatical movements trying to get people to think how deep we are. Looking at their emotions. Emotions. Playing with people's spirits, their mind, their hearts, taking it and twisting it into the 21st century about what they really should be doing. How can you fight anything if you don't know what you're fighting? So, so, but one thing for sure people don't pay attention to in Daniel's the first chapter, is bag up two chapters. It's getting kind of hot. In Daniel's the first chapter, if I would have knew then what I know now, I could have made a lot more money. But once I realized that that wasn't what the Father wanted me to do, was to trick the people out their money. Because if you feed sheep and sheep eating good green grass, don't you think that sheep have enough common sense when he get an appetite again to go back where? To the green grass where he got it from. You ain't got to do nothing to the sheep just let them go. That's the same way with us. We sheep. The people that do wicked are called goats. The goats on the left hand, the sheep on the right hand. Jesus feed us. Some people say Jesus wasn't real. One day I'm going to teach that. One day I'm going to teach that. In Daniel 1 and verse 3, And the king spoke unto Ashkenaz, the master of his eunuchs. Now you don't see people trying to be eunuchs today. No. Some eunuchs was born eunuchs, some eunuchs chose to be eunuchs, and some eunuchs was made by man. And what do a eunuch, what, what makes you a eunuch in, in what they do today? They, they tell you sustain from sexual intercourse. And some people make sure you would stay because they cut it off. They cut it off. These, 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 these kings nowadays, you do that, they'll leave the church, as they said. Okay. That he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed. And of the princes. Where you at? Daniel's 1, the first chapter, we just read verse 3. We're at verse 4 now. Yeah. Now, some of yours may say children, but this one say youth. Youth in whom was no blemish, but well favored. Listen to this. But well what? Favored and skillful in all wisdom. So you mean they knew what we was talking about today? Oh, much more. Mm -hmm. And gifted in what? Nothing. Knowledge. And what? Understanding science. And such had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace. You know, you can't just walk up to a king. You have to be this. You have to have the ability to go before a king. Because if you don't, guess what he's going to do to you? Off with your head. Okay. Uh, and such had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning of the tongue of the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans spake Aramaic. Aramaic. Similar to Hebrew. But Aramaic, the brogue is different. Airmen. So we have a lot of them in Detroit, Michigan. We have a lot of airmen, Chaldeans, and Arabs. Down here they have a lot of Indians. 
I mean, I just noticed the geographical area, this is not a coincidence that they come to these areas. It's not a coincidence. Okay, but I don't want to get into that right now. But but they was able to be able to recognize the meaning of these images. Images. That images was what? Three scores. Go back to Revelation 13 chapter. What time is it? Oh wow. We gotta stop what we go here, we're gonna stop. Ten minutes. Um 13th chapter again. Let me show you how, how this is very well put together. Verse 4 of the 13th chapter. It says, and they worship the dragon. See that? Yeah. And they worship. That was the image. Now, what is the number 66? I will worship. I will worship. Okay. And they worship Jack who gave them power unto the what? Beast. What are we talking about in that 18th verse of the 13th chapter? Here is wisdom. Let him have understanding. Count the number of the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war? Uh-oh, see that? Who is able to make war with him? So, uh, I'm going to give you some time. But this chapter reminds me, I call it the three W's. I made that up. This ain't biblical, y'all. I made that up. Worship, wisdom, and war. Worship, wisdom, and war. Now, let me just read a couple more verses. Verse 5. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth to speak great things and blasphemy. What makes you not perfect? We read it in the book of James, the third chapter. What makes a man perfect and not perfect? His tongue. Yes. Them tongue, that tongue, that form words. Okay? Um, and power was given, un given unto him to count forty in two months. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blaspheming against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Wow, man. You see how powerful this is? 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues, and nation. That sounds something like Luther, though. Now, verse 8, it said, And all that dwell upon the earth shall what? Worship, Worship him. It looks like that's happening right now. Because these leaders ain't worshiping Jesus Christ. They worshiping things, and their body, and they sexual issues, and they houses, and they cars, and they jewelry, and they big churches, and they call them titles and names. What you think they doing? I want y'all to hear this today. That's what they doing. That's why you're turned off about them. Because your spirit is not accepting it. It is not from the Father. It is evil. If you spell evil backwards, what you get? Spell evil backwards. Devil. Spell it back. Spell evil backwards. Live. Right, yeah. <laughs> if you spell devil backwards, you got lived. Okay? So he says, let me finish this verse up. Uh, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him who names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. I'm going to stop right there. But Jesus told you, he said he was slain from what? Before the foundations of the world. Let me give you this last verse. Remember this one I just said. He was slain from what? Foundation of the world. Go to the first book in the New Testament, Matthews. Matthews. See what, we'll see what Jesus said about that. 
Let's see. Let's see. chapter. Matthews, the 13th chapter. We're going to stop here and I'll give you a few minutes of question. Matthews, the 13th chapter, verse 35. Matthews 13, verse 35. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Thank you, Father, for the reading of his word, the understanding that you have given us. Let this now go into good ground and minister to your people all around the world. And all he did, and then can we be careful to give you all the praise God's power. The name of Yahshua and Messiah, Jesus Christ, commandments. So, questions, statements, Question. We got five minutes. And yeah, it should be recorded. That's what she do. Oh, she recorded? Yes. My, the first one was it's on YouTube. You can go back and watch it on your phone. Yeah, that one, that one. But this is some this is some good meat, ain't it? Oh yeah. This is some good meat. And that's what we should be doing today. Enlightening the body of Christ. Open the eyes of men. Opening the eyes of men. Okay? Any more questions or statements? Okay. If not, we'll conclude this. And I just want to say, when we say that we are suffering a long time, guess what? Jesus already knew what we had to fight against. What's power? How did all this stuff that you're eating, how did you come about all this? I know, you, I know you had to study, but he had to give it to you. The right? Because I mean, just reading the Bible. And you, you can don't never see it. Stuff, you don't never see it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. See, that's what it is. Especially that's since I don't speak no Hebrew and <laughs> Arabic and all that. Yes. And I'll never get it. Yes. See, that's why I was telling, I was telling Mama Barbara this morning. Before I started teaching and preaching, mm -hmm. I could not read. So when the Lord told me at 12 years old, I'm calling you to preach. I laughed. See, I heard it in my mind, but I knew it was something powerful divine talking to me. Because the reason why I laughed is because how can you preach and teach if you can't read? He said, sing me a song 20 years ago that you remember. Sing any song. That taught me too that Father ain't judgmental and personal like we be saying here. Because I guess what song I saw. Pretty woman, walk on by. Pretty woman, give your smile. El Green. He said, now if you can remember a song 20 years ago, you go get that Bible on cassette and remember the whole Bible. Remember the Bible on cassette. On cassette. Get it on cassette. Yeah. And listen to it until you learn it. And that's how I learned how to read it. Yes, same thing. Same thing. See, because look, if we can take our life, Papa Tommy, if we can take our lives and remember the foolish thing, I know you can remember some 20, 30, 40 years ago. Why can't you remember that Bible? Yeah, my daddy couldn't read it right. Yes. But he always used to sing this song, A Charge to Keep I Have. Yeah, I'll say it again. A Charge to Keep I Have. A Charge to Keep I Have. Mm -hmm. See that? Now, I bet you if your dad was still living today, he would still remember that song. Now, I, I know him singing in church sometimes. Yes. I don't understand what the heck they were saying because they go so far into it. And you got one, he gets down on his knees and he start all this and all of them going on. <laughs> what, the, what is it? Yes, yes. See, the older people, they knew internally a lot more than what we projected externally. See, back then and still to this day, as you get older, 
your sense of foolishness become very little. Yeah. Cause I used to get mad with my dad because things that other kids have, I didn't have. But I realized now I had it better than they had. Yes. Because I had my dad and he was a good provider. He yes. didn't take me to no football game. He didn't come to any of my games. But hey, he took care of it. That's what he knew how. Yes. See, that's what me and Lack today. All right, we're going to conclude um, this lecture. You can check it out on YouTube. Please go check it out. Hit us up and join the class. Till next time, shalom, peace and love.